I'm John Skinner, and this video supports Chapter 4 in my book, Fishing the Bucktail. In this video, I'm using the top bucktail. That's a 2-ounce Andrus Rip Splitter, and it's tipped with a number 50 strip of Uncle Josh Pork Rind. Here's a look at the retrieve speed, and it's quite a bit slower than how I would normally retrieve a 2-ounce bucktail from an ocean beach, and I'll get into that as we go along. This is early November on Long Island's south shore. Uh, there was a pretty hard blow the day before. In fact, uh, one of the videos on my YouTube channel shows me uh, bucktailing the late afternoon and evening before this trip. And uh, these waves are reading on the buoys, or the weather buoys, at about 7.5 feet 11 seconds. Uh, so these are swells that are coming in. The wind is actually fairly light and on my back, but there are big waves coming in and uh, it, it's hard to appreciate the waves on the video and that has to do with the wide angled lens on the camera and, and something that that lens does is it pushes what you see out a little further so things look a little further away and a little bit smaller so it's not really giving you a good view of those waves but I can tell you that um, it is mostly a shore break there is a little bit of breaking out further but mostly these waves are just pounding on the beach and uh, you can tell right from where this fish is going, there's a fair amount of sweep that I'm dealing with. So this was a pretty interesting trip for me. I wasn't doing all that well, and the fishing was kind of slow. And uh, this is a Saturday afternoon. It's around noontime. I'm in a very easily accessible area. Right behind me, there's a public parking lot where anybody can park. And still, you don't see too many people on the beach. But that one guy that you can see further down the beach, uh, he was picking some fish and he was getting enough fish for me to realize that I was just not doing things as best I could and that um, you know maybe if I made some small change I could be catching better. So I don't like to get too close to people, I don't want to crowd them, so I, I kept my distance from him but kind of took note of what he was doing and he was throwing a diamond jig and tube combination, nothing fancy. but he was making half casts. He was not casting very far intentionally and he was letting his lure go to the bottom and then he was retrieving painstakingly slow, just very unusually slow. And you know, I, I know about catching fish on slow retrieves but uh, this was um, really quite striking what he was doing. And as soon as I caught on to that I never even made another cast with a diamond jig. I went immediately to a two ounce bucktail because I knew I could drag that thing right underneath those waves where those fish were hitting and from that point on uh, the rest of the afternoon just worked out very very well for me. The interesting thing was I had already tried a two ounce bucktail but used it at what I would consider a more normal retrieve and I simply wasn't getting hit. These fish were just extremely picky. You had to work that lure right down on the bottom or you would not get hit and uh, you know once I got locked into that uh, it was just one fish after another and then it was interesting to watch because I kept my eye on the other angler and he managed to pick away but not at the frequency that I was doing with the bucktail. The bucktail really was a perfect lure once uh, I got the retrieve speed correct. It was just perfect for getting underneath those waves right where those fish were feeding. And almost all those hits were coming right behind the shore break, uh, right in the turbulence and uh, another thing that was noteworthy the hits were were pathetic they were not typical bucktail taps like if you watch my videos and you watch the rod tip very carefully most of the time you'll see a very sharp tap it's a very classic bucktail hit but not this day this day the hits many times felt like you were getting just caught on something on the bottom it was almost as though you were uh, picking up weed or something and when you felt that weight you had to set the hook and that was a fish. I mean there was nothing there to get hung on. If you felt something like just sort of grabbing, that was a fish. It was just very um, unusual hits and it was just somewhat of an unusual day the way these fish were hitting and what they really wanted in terms of what they were going to react to. Throughout most of this video I'm not making full casts. I'm taking maybe a little more than a half a cast and what I found was that it was pretty much counterproductive to make a long cast because what would happen is there was so much sweep 
by the time the lure would get in the strike zone, which was where the waves were breaking, it was swept pretty far down the beach and the sweep was just pulling that lure up and off the bottom. If I led the sweep a little bit, made a half a cast, then I could time it so that uh, the lure would be almost directly out in front of me when it got underneath those breaking waves and that was just a perfect presentation and um, a perfect situation for getting firm hookups on the hits. Long period waves like this are uh, very powerful and uh, it, they create a lot of turbulence. So even though I say that I'm dragging the bucktail through the sand, it's not the same as dragging it through the sand on a calm day. Probably despite my best efforts to drag it through the sand, there's not actually a lot of that happening because there's so much turbulence, so much water movement. Uh, this beach has been beaten down. It's uh, got a pretty flat angle to it. So there's a lot of undertow. When those waves run up the beach, they run right back out again. And there's a lot of force there. Plus there's a lot of sweep. So generally, a lot of water movement. And this is the kind of day that you need to be sort of careful because you can uh, step out onto the sand and really not have any water near you and then the next thing you know you're up to your waist in very hard moving water and be pretty easy to actually get knocked on your butt on a day like this if you're not too careful. This video was shot in the middle of a pretty good sand eel run that had been going on for a couple of weeks. Uh, despite the fact that they're on sand eels and a bucktail doesn't look anything like a sand eel, Bucktail is still often very effective uh, when the predominant bait is sand eels. This rod is an 11 footer built on a Lamaglass GSB 1321M blank. The reel is a Pen 706Z and it's spooled with 30 pound test spider wire stealth. There's a uh, about a 3 foot liter 50 pound test fluorocarbon at the end. The braid is joined to the leader with a barrel swivel and there's a tactical angler's clip at the end to attach the bucktail. This is the fourth open beach bucktail video I've posted to my YouTube channel in the course of about a month and uh, it was a four part series that covered different conditions. So the first video was fishing with pretty much flat calm water and uh, no wind. The second video was a very light chop but a strong onshore wind and the next video was shot the day before this and it was big waves and a strong wind and then this video here which is uh, the remnants of that blow from the previous day which are swells with just a light uh, offshore wind. And one of the great things about a bucktail is it's just an extremely versatile lure and it produces under all these different kinds of conditions. The weight and hair density of the bucktail that you choose, the type of trailer, where you cast, um, when you start your retrieve, how you retrieve, these are all the variables that go into um, getting the bucktail to work right and be productive across a wide range of conditions. And uh, you know, with some experience and practice, um, you know, it's a lure that can really add a lot to your score on a consistent basis. The water on this trip was kind of brownish because uh, it had been rough the day before, the night before, and it was pretty churned up. There wasn't much weed, but um, it was brown, but the fish, they really still have no trouble picking up the bucktail under those conditions. I'm done with the narration now. Enjoy the rest of the video.